Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Cavs Insider. I'm Dan Lobby. Let's take a quick look at the week that happened for the Cavaliers. They lost to the Brooklyn Nets. Then they came back and beat the Philadelphia 76ers, a game that was a little bit closer than a lot of people wanted. And then they beat the Miami Heat at home on Thursday night. It's on to the Bulls and the Bucks. I had a chance to talk to Chris Terzik. He runs bloggables.com. And then, of course, I talked to our Cavaliers beat reporter, Chris Haynes, uh, to kind of look at where the team was in regards to getting ready for the playoffs. That's coming up. Like I said, though, here's a quick look at the week that was. All right, I'm now joined by Chris Terzik. He runs bloggables.com. Chris, thanks for taking the time. Hi, Dan. Thanks for having me on. All right, so the Chicago Bulls, you know, look, their record is good. Uh, of course, Derrick Rose has been hurt. It's a weird situation. I don't hear a lot of buzz uh, about this basketball team. Is it, is it because of the Derrick Rose situation, or what is it? Um, it's a combination of things, for sure. Derrick Rose probably being at the, at the headline of what's going on with them currently. Today marks the five-week uh, date exactly since he had his procedure on his meniscus done. So as of right now, everything's going according to plan with him. The team's saying the right things. Uh, Tom Thibodeau's saying the right, team, right things. The players are saying the right things. Um, unfortunately, Rose himself is the only one who isn't saying the right things. He's kind of leaving his, his return kind of vague, which is upsetting some people around here. But, um, yeah, the buzz, the buzz for them, probably not what it is ordinarily is. I don't know. Chicago's a Chicago market, so they receive national attention regardless. But um, just the lack of Rose the last month or so, sure, yeah, that's probably not made them as visible as, as Cleveland right now, but Cleveland's playing a lot better than, than the Bulls are right now. And Atlanta obviously has been so consistent all year. So maybe Rose has something to do with it. Um, Joe Kim Noah hasn't been himself this year. Maybe that has something to do with it. So it, it's a combination, I think, for sure. Let's talk a little more specifically about Derrick Rose. Um, the hope was that he would be back by the playoffs. Is, is that still the goal, and do you think that's still a reality? Sure. I, I guarded optimism. This is the way I would put where I'm at right now. Definitely guarded optimism. The plan is for him to come back in the postseason. Um, like I just said, everything that the team and also Thibodeau and the players, they're all saying the right things. Everything has gone according to plan since he underwent the procedure five weeks ago. Um, they, there's been no missteps, there's been no uh, backtrack, nothing has gone wrong to this point. And there's basically next week, which would be the, the sixth week of his four to six week timetable when he initially uh, went underneath went, uh, the procedure got done, um, next week would be the week where we're expecting him to come back. Sunday when uh, the Bulls take on the Cavs, I wouldn't expect him to be back. But next week, they play Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, two road games in Florida against the Magic and the Heat, and then they play at home on Saturday against the Sixers. So that week would be the date he, the, the, the week he should come back. And after that, the Bulls have two more games to, follow, to finish up the regular season, and then they have the playoffs. So I think he really needs those, those two games, those three games, whatever it's going to be. He needs those regular season games because everything that they're saying in practice is he's just missing his win. He looks good. He's taking contact in practice. Um, he's been doing it all week. Uh, they just, they need, they need, he needs that conditioning. That's, that's basically everything they've been saying and what I believe too. He needs to get acclimated, adjusted to what the team's been doing since he's been out of the lineup. So he, he needs those few regular season games. And I think he will be back for the playoffs. Now, to answer your question, I, I, I believe he will. Um, there's nothing that the, he has said or the team has said that would indicate otherwise. Chris, how far can this team go in the postseason with Derrick Rose and without Derrick Rose? With Rose, I, I would say anything less than an Eastern Conference Finals would probably be a failure. Um, unfortunately, no matter what, in the second round of the playoffs, and looking at it past their first round match, but if they were to reach, hypothetically were to reach the second round, um, they would either take on Cleveland or Atlanta, and that's Obviously, no walk in the park. That the, the Bulls will not be favored in that matchup. They shouldn't be. Those Cleveland and Atlanta are the superior team to Chicago. I believe that. But I, I, I do think Chicago with Bulls poses an interesting matchup against both of them. I don't think that they're um, at any large deficit in any one area of the court. I think both those, all three of those teams, are the cream of the crop in the Eastern Conference. And then you get to the the Washingtons and Torontos and Milwaukee's, and then you kind of start falling off a little bit. Without Rose. Boy, um, 
a first round exit would certainly be a major disappointment. And then who knows what happens in the off season? There's probably going to be a large overhaul, um, starting with the head coach on down, and then starting looking at the roster. Uh, I think without Rose, they can probably get out of the first round. It's all matchup dependent, though. Without Rose, the matchup is, is entirely what's going to determine where they go in the playoffs. If they get Milwaukee in the first round, I think they can beat them handily without Derek. If they get Washington, which I think every Chicago fan, and yeah, I'm speaking for the majority of the fan base, and I think I sh- my sentiment is, is shared with them, we don't want Washington. That, that's the one that definitely want to avoid. If we get them without Rose, I, I could see a repeat of last year in the first round exit. Real quickly, Chris, because you mentioned Tom Thibodeau. Um, if this team does come up short, you know, this guy has been probably as good a coach as we've had in the NBA, but at the same time hasn't quite gotten the Bulls for various reasons to, uh, to where they expected to get to. What's his future hold? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's been something that's been talked about as much this year as it has in the past. Um, it's a pressing issue that's continually been in the headlines here in Chicago. And what my stance on it is perhaps a little bit different than most. I think he's a great coach. First and foremost, I should preface that. I think Tom Thibodeau is a fantastic head coach. And, um, you know, he, everything that he's done in this league at, from his time as an assistant to his time with the Bulls as a head coach has been great. I mean, he's been a revolutionary on the defensive end. However, having said all that, I do think what happens in the playoffs this year will determine his fate. But also another uh, contingency on that is he has two years left on his deal that he signed two years ago. He signed a four-year extension two years ago, and he has $4.5 million annually he's owed the next two seasons. And the owner of the Chicago Bulls, Jerry Reinsdorf, um, preaches a, or it, the way they run that organization is, is very loyalty-based. Um, Jerry definitely has a commitment to Tom. Um, he owns the Chicago White Sox. This is going back a few, five, ten years now. Um, when Ozzie Guillen managed the Chicago White Sox and Ken Williams was the general manager there, Jerry Reinsdorf allowed those two to have their differences. It was a, those two, Williams and, and Ozzie Guillen, had differences for sure and just as well known as Tom Thibodeau's differences with this organization with the Bulls and, and, and the management. It, it's, the friction is there. It exists. But unless Tom Thibodeau decides to leave at his own discretion, then I don't see the breakup happening because Reinsdorf wants to keep this this close knit wants to keep things together until he doesn't have to eat a contract or until something so substantial happens that they do have no other option than to, than to have to leave. Um, it, again, it needs to be at his own discretion just because of the, uh, the ownership, the way they view uh, contracts and, and their employees and the way they value their employees. So I don't see him leaving unless a first round exit happens. And there's, there's so much uncertainty right now, but where I'm at, it's kind of more, it, it needs to be on Tibbs. If he wants to leave, then he'll leave. But I don't see them forcing him out. That's just my opinion. All right, Chris Terzik joining me from bloggable.com. Chris, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Dan. My pleasure. All right, let's go ahead and take a look now at the week ahead for the Cavaliers. I'm now joined by our Cavaliers beat reporter, Chris Haynes, via phone. Chris, how are you? Dan, I'm doing good. How about yourself, man? I'm doing well. Uh, let's start with Kevin Love. There's been a lot of speculation about injuries with Love and his back in particular. Uh, didn't play yesterday against the Heat because of the back. It was an issue against Philadelphia. Should we be concerned about this? Well, it's been an ongoing problem with him all year. Should we be concerned? I would say a little bit because uh, I really do think there's a lot more to his back than what he's letting on. And I'm not talking about any structural damage. I'm just talking about just the just the pain that he must be enduring. But I really do think uh, his back, along with you know his knee, his knee issues here and there, I really think has been a, uh, affecting his performance. Uh, you know, he's just not has been as physical as he's been, you know, in previous years. He, he's been roaming out there on the perimeter. A lot of that is because of you know the the isolation sets by Kyrie and LeBron and pick and roll setting, you know, it requires Kevin Love to be out space on the floor. But I think a lot has to do you know, with just what he's able to do right now physically. And, uh, you know, he's still going to be able to get you some good numbers. He's still producing at a high level. Um, but with that being said, I do think the back is somewhat of a concern. Not a major one, but something to think about. Chris, you look at that win over the Heat. Uh, the Cavs have had their struggles against that team. 
how important was it for them to get the heat in their own building and kind of beat them up a little bit? Well, they, they felt like they had to do that, you know, with how the heat took care of them in Miami a few weeks back. With that being said, I don't think it was something that they needed to get done. I think this team, is, is a, as far as the season goes, they've been there, done that. You know, I think they've done, done you know, all that they needed to do. And I think the players in that locker room are secure in knowing where they stand in this league. And I think they're looking at the big picture. But with that being said, you know, they those guys came out, you know, Kyrie talking about, you know, they, they, they had this game circle for a while. Tristan Thompson had similar comments. So, uh, apparently, for some of those guys, you know, they felt like that just beating up on the Miami Heat team was a uh, uh, was a must. Uh, I, I didn't see it that way, but you know, it, it is what it is. But you know, it's going to be interesting to see how this playoff positioning, you know, shapes up. Because I still think, you know, with a healthy or a somewhat healthy Dwayne Wade, I still think. Miami could give them problems in the first round. What's all the emotional drama that will come along with that series? All the hoopla that will come come about. I think that can be a, a concerning situation for the Cavs. But if not, if it's Brooklyn, Milwaukee, Boston, I think it's a piece of cake. Chris, so much has been made, of course, with that Brian Winhurst podcast and the relationship between LeBron James and, and David Blatt. Was that whole thing overblown, especially with the LeBron calling the plays? How is their relationship right now? Well, the relationship is still ongoing. You know, it's definitely improved since, you know, beginning of the year. And we all knew that's, that was going to happen. Whenever, you know, two people team up for the first time, you're going to have your your bumps in the road. But, you know, winning cures all. And I think we've seen that. And as far as play calling, yeah, yeah it was overblown. Um, you know, a lot of great players do it. I think what, you know, what Brian said, or I think what people took from what Brian said was that um, he's doing it behind his back. And I think that's what kind of gets got gets kind of mixed up here. And, and I, you know, I think a lot of people were reporting, hey, he's calling behind his back. And then there were some people reporting, hey, you know, he's, um, he's, he's just calling the plays. And Black is not, you know, has no role. And that's just not true. You know, the the play caller, it, it goes on. It's been going on for a while. When you, when you talk about superstar players and particularly players who dominate the ball, which are point guards, or in this case, LeBron James. So they have that freedom. And it, you know, and that's not a problem at all. I, I don't think Brian intended for it to reach this magnitude of, you know, that it did. It's just an unfortunate situation because it came on the heels of, you know, David Black winning. Uh, coach of the month, and it was unfortunate that Black had to address, you know, address that issue. But I just think it was something that got overblown on all parties, and uh, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, none, none, of this, none of this happens again. But uh, it's been going on all year, so you know, we'll see. Uh, Chris, I think a lot of people in Cleveland forgot how long the NBA season feels when you've got a really good team that kind of locks into seating early on. Uh, a lot of fine tuning now just going on. Do you feel like? Uh, you know, let's say the playoffs started tomorrow. I is this team ready? Yeah, they're ready. They're ready. You know, none of the players are going to say, or the coaches are going to say if they're ready, because they don't want to put out the impression that they're overlooking the opponents coming up on the, you know, the end of the schedule. But, you know, they, I mean, uh, what, what, what's the next six games going to do to prepare them for the playoffs? You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you want to go in. The thing is, you want to go in as healthy as possible. I think that's their number one concern. And maybe with Kevin Love being banged up, you know, maybe these six games right here, you may rest him a couple more. Maybe this will help him out just from a health standpoint. But as far as being in tune and, you know, just being in sync with one another, I mean, they're right, they're right there ready. LeBron is ready. He, he's fresh. You know, Kyrie Irving is playing at a high level. So, it's, you know, they're, 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 they're all right, man. If the season started right, I mean, the season concluded right now, they, they will still be the favorites to represent the East. Um, in the NBA Finals, and uh, that's not going to change now, and it won't change later on. The season's been a grind, Chris. I got to know, are you ready for the playoffs? I've been ready. <laughs> you know, I've been looking at the live end of the tunnel for a while, and uh, you know, the playoffs for me, you know, as a you know somebody covering the, the league, it's so much. It's a slower pace. You have you have a game, and you have a couple practices in between. It slows down a little bit, and so for you know for 
individual cover in the playoffs. So for me, I find it a little bit more refreshing. You have a little bit more time to digest things and go from um, day to day. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a, a heck of a playoff, and sp- particularly for my own rooting interest. I'm definitely pulling for the Miami Heat to get that number seven seed because you know I would much rather go to Miami than go to Brooklyn or Boston or Milwaukee. But nobody cares what I want. But you know I think it's going to be a compelling playoff series regardless. All right, Chris Haynes, our Cavaliers beat reporter. Wishing for a trip to Miami. I can't say I blame him uh, after all the weather we've had here in Ohio. But come on, Chris, it's like 50 degrees today. Hey, well, look, you know, considering the weather we had, what, in January to February, hey, it looks like a sunny day today. So I'll take it, man. I'm not complaining at all. See, there you go. Chris Haynes, our Cavaliers beat reporter. Thanks for joining us, Chris. All right, take care, Dan. All right, and here's a quick look at the NBA standings. <laughs> All right, there it is. Cavs Insider, another one in the books. No, uh, no Chris Fedor this week. He's fighting off a, uh, a nasty cold, so we're giving him a couple days off. So no fill in the blanks, no true or false, none of that fun SAT stuff. We'll be back with that next week. I'm Dan Lobby. My thanks to Chris Haynes and Chris Terzik. Thanks for watching.